Now for a closer look at Palin and Bachman, our Republican strategists, Margaret Hoover and John Avalon, senior political columnist for the Daily Beast. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. At this film, The Undefeated. Um, that, would, <laughs> that would lead me to believe she's never lost anything. And if we go, I mean, she didn't win, uh, even as a, you know, the vice presidential uh, element of the ticket there. So yeah, bit just the, the title alone, I mean, it's like... Kind of winning the Super Bowl, but as the assistant coach, and you, know, you say you lost it, where do you get the title you've, from? You've yeah. got to channel strength, you've got to channel victory, and Sarah Palin certainly has an uphill climb, but it's not impossible for her. The, this video, this this movie premiere, is going to be a splash for her in Iowa, but waiting rooms. Iowa voters won't vote for you if they haven't met you at least three times. Yes. So they really need to get to know Sarah Palin, and it's not out of the question that she could do that, but she's really got to show she's committed. Yeah. John, what but, do you think about this, this glossy uh, But this movie? is a movie yeah. premiere. I mean, let's be clear. This is a movie premiere, not Red a presidential event. Works, yeah. She hasn't done any of the hard work it takes to seriously run for president, put together an organization. Sunny, and people people notice that. I mean, if you want to figure out what's really going on in a presidential race, follow up in the Republican field. I mean, I think there's still a wanting from Republican voters, somebody who has star power and cachet that people will flock to. I think Michelle Bachman's filled a little bit of that, but there is still intrigue with Sarah Palin. She's got to get over the hump, though. A majority of Republican primary voters say that they're not sure if they would vote for her for president. What is it about this woman, though? Because she, she draws these crowds, yet you you see in people that love her just don't want to see sure. her as president mm -hmm. and she's got the negatives are so high how do you get past that with such a polarizing figure when it, people basically have they've got their impressions of Sarah Palin. It's incredibly difficult because she is one of the most polarizing figures in American politics and this is one of the problems in our politics because the parties are polarized. Dad. This is a common thread, Margaret, that we're hearing from a number of new politicians who are putting themselves in the field. They're basically, we are the other option. We are not the standard status quo that you've grown accustomed to. Well, it, it, that is a winning argument. With, with not, uh, unemployment at 9.1 percent, with uh, all Republicans setting themselves up as an alternative to Obama's economic policies, the country is struggling. Gas prices are high. People are trying to balance their paychecks and they checkbooks, and they think that the federal government should have to balance theirs. What the Tea Party was originally about and these all of the candidates in the Republican field are galvanizing that base of supporters because they are all hurting and they feel like economic policies of our administration have not worked yeah. yeah but but when Michelle Bachman presents herself as a candidate that can appeal to disaffected Democrats and independents as well as Republicans it just doesn't fly yeah. I mean there's a context in a candidacy and she sounds very responsible now and she's putting forward an economic message that can appeal broadly but you got to look at her record of statements this is somebody who plays politics by talk radio rules when which there is no such thing as too extreme this is somebody who introduced herself to the American people, asking whether President Obama is anti-American, talking about bringing tyranny to the United States. These are not responsible statements. And yet so, she's <laughs> neck and neck with Mitt Romney in Iowa. In Iowa. And, but, but keep in mind that Mitt Romney's not even playing in Iowa. And, and the fact that Michelle Bachman can do very well in an Iowa caucus should have Republicans really aware of, of what the forces they've been playing with. Can either one, let's say Sarah Palin does say, I will run for president. You've got these two women there. Can either one beat President Obama? <laughs> Let me go, no. <laughs> uh, look, I, I think it's an uphill climb because Do they if you even look have a at chance? independent voters, sure they have every, chance. look, every Republican knows that you've got to win Republicans, but you've got to get independents too. And, and Republicans and the conservative base are also looking, can they beat Obama? That's what we're really looking for. We're not looking sure. for somebody who's just playing to the base. We're looking for someone who can appeal broadly in the general election. Will she, will she say, I will run for president, do you think? Or do the two of them steal each other's votes? I, they overlap considerably. It would be fascinating to see if she did get in where their votes would give and get. But the reality is, look, winning a, winning a nomination is one thing. Winning a general election is entirely another. As Margaret said, you've got to win independents and centrists. And if your whole career has been throwing bombs to appeal to the base, you've alienated the very people you need to win the White House. But they don't overlap because they're women. And that's, <laughs> that's one right. thing. We, you yeah. know, we want more women in politics and yeah. we want to encourage women to get in politics. Women are desperately underrepresented in the federal government. Yeah. So we want to encourage more. Some women. They're, yeah, they're both I mean, creating all the buzz, though, right now. You that's right. You, know, that, that you cannot it's, deny it. It's Partly really re energized the Republican women's face. That you can. <laughs> And you still can you still can lose something and say I'm undefeated. You're undefeated. <laughs> Which is a breakthrough, right? There. Well, John Avalon, thank you very much. Thank Margaret you. Good, Hoover, good to see thank the you. both of you. And now here's Jeff Blore at the news desk with another check of the headlines. Sure. Back of weather, Matt. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everyone at home. Let's take a look at how your Tuesday is shaping up across the lower 48. That storm system in the Great Lakes has pushed south and east. We're looking at two specific areas of severe weather: the Rockies and the Central Plains. But let's take a look at the desert southwest, where the winds have shifted just a bit, as we showed you early in the broadcast. 
broadcast. So the winds are now coming out of the south, which continues to keep things very dry. And because the wind is pushing this way, areas north of the fire are going to have really poor air quality. So areas north of Albuquerque are going to have a poor air quality alert. Temperatures again are above normal. In the Pacific Northwest, an unusual storm for this time of year. In June, they usually see much better temperatures than this, but temperatures below average, and it's just going to be an all-day rain event. You know, if you can play hooky and watch a movie, don't tell your boss I told you to do it, but that's what I would do. That's a look at the weather across the nation. Now let's see what's happening right outside your window. Good. A lot to discuss. Joining us now is medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Great to have you with us Good as morning, always, Dr. Rebecca. Ashton. So this drug actually got accelerated approval in 2008 right. for use in breast cancer, but then as of last year, they started talking about revoking it. Why? Well, let's go through some background here, Rebecca. This was a drug, as you mentioned, that was approved for women with advanced stage breast cancer to slow the growth of those tumors that had already spread outside the breast. Now, this is the latest chapter in an ongoing saga about this drug about not only whether it works but is it safe now when you talk about any drug especially one being used to doctors have a sense it could really benefit from this versus where it could be detrimental they don't really know yet and they're going to be looking we will obviously bring you that information we'll as be soon as it becomes it. available as always dr jennifer ashton thank you, you we bet, appreciate Rebecca. it we'll be right back this is the early show on cbs Well, still thinking about a trip to your local state park this weekend? Better bring your wallet, maybe an alternative plan. Yeah, a lot of states don't have enough money to keep with Chris Raggy. Good yeah, morning. Reminds me back in my days when I was a base jumper back in Free college. Fallen. Yeah. Free falling. Coming up, we're going to ask high flying Birdman JT Holmes, one of the guys you saw right there, how he managed that spectacular stunt for the new movie Transformers. There's no special effect that they would turn away. Yeah. These guys are good. good also time. ahead, yeah, an American tradition now in danger countless people's parks. So we've got those stories coming up. Looking forward to seeing uh, JT. A little base job. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Can't get enough. First, Jeff Glor is at the news desk with one more look at the headlines for us this morning. Jeff? We're going to do an actual demonstration here in the studio. You're I mean, actually 20 feet. Yeah, I'm top of the GM. Happy, happy to do it. Yeah, nice. good stuff. Jumping right down. Good morning, good guys. Astro. They sure do. They sure do, Jeffrey. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone else. Let's take a look at the severe weather for today. This is, by the way, a very slow moving system. Denver, you could expect to see some thunderstorms and some hail by the afternoon hours. And then we're also looking at Memphis and Atlanta. You'll see some gusty winds, 80 miles per hour in the overnight hours. And then some usual rain associated with some pop-up showers in the northeast. It's a very, very slow mover. So today, upstate New York, Pittsburgh, you're going to see the rain and the wind gusts tonight. It moves into New York. And then by Wednesday, it starts to move into New England, affecting Portland and Boston. So again, we're looking at some downpours. We're looking at some gusty winds. And of course, we never rule out the possibility of some hail. Your high temperatures for today, just on target for most of you, of course, 103 in San Angelo, 75 in Fargo. That's a little bit below normal. That's a look at the weather across the nation. Now let's see what's happening right outside your window. Don Mattingly. Ah, you know what number he wore? No, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm Sporty Spice. Nice you job. Joining us now is Joanne Lipman, a financial columnist for Newsweek magazine. Joanne, good to see you here this morning. Good to be here. So what are these newest numbers? Tell us about consumer spending. So what we see with the newest numbers is that personal income is actually up 0.3%. Yeah, telling us. Why so, are people so scared to get out there and spend their money? Well, well, you hit the nail on the head. People are scared. And the big, big issue behind all these numbers is consumer confidence. American are worried. They're worried about their jobs. They're worried about gas prices, which have been high. They're worried about home prices, which have been continuing to fall. So you've got a consumer confidence issue. And then on top of that, you had the tsunami earlier this year, which meant that um, a lot of the Americans buy a lot of Japanese cars, which were not available. So Americans weren't buying them. And then um, on top of that, you have the, a, an uptick in inflation, which is for the first time uh, the, 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 we're seeing a larger inflation number since 2009. Okay, I want to ask you about gas prices in a second, and we'll, we'll talk about that's back. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. And the, and the single largest barrier to growth and to confidence is the message from Washington that Washington is on top of this and is going to fix things. And mm -hmm. the, the fact is, Americans are worried and nervous right now because we're in this hyper partisan atmosphere where there's so much battling between between the two parties that Americans are concerned that the parties are too busy battling each other to fix the economy. Yeah, if you're waiting for a positive message out of Washington with the way things go on there, you might be in a little bit of trouble. And you know what? It's a big problem because consumer spending is 70% of the economy. So we need to get consumer spending again. As far as gas prices are concerned, they're coming down, but they're not where they were a year ago. How much lower do they need to come before people can say, okay, this is 
this is tolerable. You know, my feeling is actually gas prices is only a piece of the equation. And the problem is that even if gas prices come down, other prices are going up. So we have this inflation rate that is starting to see an uptick. But beyond that, the inflation rate, the way the government calculates the inflation, inflation rate does not include food or fuel. And food prices are ticking up. And commodity prices like that's like corn and wheat and sugar are way up. And those prices are working their way into the grocery store. So Americans are still facing and higher prices on that end. All right, let's talk about savings, now personal savings. Where do we stand as a nation right now? How are people doing in that regard? That's a very interesting question because personal savings are actually up to now five again. Though there's still a quarter of Americans, 24% of Americans, who don't have any emergency savings at all. No rainy day fund. Got to no, work on not that. at all. All right, Joanne, thanks so much. Good to see you this Good morning. Good to see you. Thanks. And now let's go over to Ms. Jarvis, Rebecca. Thank you, Chris. Many of us are ready to spend the July 4th weekend at a nearby state park. These parks have typically offered cheap and accessible vacations for decades, but now state budget cuts are changing that. As CBS News national correspondent Ben Tracy reports. This and there is potentially a broader economic ripple effect. One big loser if state parks were to be padlocked would be the nearby communities. Everything from stores where park users buy their supplies to shops where they get their RV service, those could all be hurt. The parks cost state governments about $2.3 billion a year, but they generate nearly 10 times that amount for the surrounding areas. It's about $20 billion. We'll be right back. This is The Early Show on CBS.